This is Stuart for Upside Down TV. I'm reporting from Canyon Country, California today. Home of Magic Mountain, CalArts Film School, Vasquez Rocks, Agua Dulce, used for many science fiction films and features. Many film ranches are out here, such as Disney and other ranches. But today, I'm here to bring you to Phone Hedge West, created by Kim Fahey, a visionary, along with visionaries like Mulholland, Disney, and others. Simon Rodia, who built the Watts Towers. Without people such as these, amazing things like this would never happen. LA County Building and Safety wants to tear this down. We're here today to meet Mr. Fahey and go to the city council meeting to help protect and preserve this amazing piece of art. I, th I think that uh, they should leave the man alone. He's tried to do everything they've asked him to do and they just keep putting him off so the man should be able to build his house however he wants to build it. Tell me to show up. And I take the court appointed counsels you give me that say, plead guilty. 
plead guilty. Well, I didn't do that. And for 18 months from, night, from 2006, uh, they did a lot of things to me that I, I, I learned uh, about our judicial system. It's, it's not the way you think. So enough about me. Um, there's people right now that are being put on the street. They're being put on the street. And I'm not saying that they're uh, heart surgeons or they're uh, the greatest uh, boons to society that ever existed. But they are human beings. And they've been put in some tough situations. And now they're losing everything they got. And it's not right. And sitting here talking about Norm Hinkling really pisses me off. You should be telling Norm Hinkling what to do. He doesn't tell us jack. They make up these laws. They make up these... these we never voted on any of them. None of them. And if you check them out and you go down and you go to the Hall of Records, their books only go to 2004. And they change their, year, their rules every three years. There's people that have paid and, and bought and paid for their land 20 years ago. And now they can't use it because they don't have a three gallon a minute 24 hour deal. Or there's some kind of a ordinance. So there's this, so there's that. And then they find out that their septic that they just put in, that they paid $23,000 for. A woman just told me this Saturday because she's moving to Idaho. They gave their house up, paid on it for five years and never got to move there. Couldn't even move their horses there. And then they came and told them, you got to pull that septic. There's a new law. You have to have a, an electronic gas monitoring system for $81,000. And they walked. They never even got to move into their house. And that's legion. It's going on right now. Now, sure, I'd love to save my place. I've been enacted since 1958. I've worked 30 years on my place. i got the best house here. And you know why? Because 25 years ago, I went to a rodeo with my daughters. They were team ropers. And there, they were ridiculed and, and literally spit on because they said, people from the Antelope Valley, all you are is a holding ground for child molesters and white trash. And I came home, and that, that really stuck in my craw. And I thought, you know what? I can build a house better than any of theirs. I can build something that actually could be proud of. That's something that nobody can turn their noses up to. Something that doesn't exist in the whole world. And that's what I set out to do. I didn't set out to build something so I could sell it and go to the south of France and drink wine. I built it so that when I'm dead and gone, my grandkids and other kids can go to the Acton Museum and Library, something that kicks ass, and there's nothing like it in the world, that I did, my family did, that Acton could be proud of. There's not one substantial building here. If somebody flew in from Boston and said, do you have a Trinity Church or something of that nature we can go take a look at? They'll say no. And you have to admit it yourselves. You can get on that freeway right now and go to Lancaster or Palmdale. And go pretty fast because you're going to pass thousands of substandard, decrepit places that should be bulldozed. But they're not. Now, I'm in the position I'm at because Michael Antonovich has a personal grudge against me. And right well he should because I speak up against him all the time. And he's got his minions against him. I had 20 of them at my house today. Figuring out how they're going to tear my house down. Well, good luck with that. There's 70,000 pounds of steel I've been well in and 90 foot long blue lamps. Have fun, boys. Uh, tear it out of my house. I don't care. I don't care. The thing with me is the building. I like to build. I tried to do something for acting. Something to be proud of. I'm tired of taking the derogatory remarks. I've been taking them for decades. Well, you live out there. I'm tired of it. I'm fed up to here. Now you want to tear my house down and you got all these other thousands of places? You got ten families living in places? Give me a break. You have to, you have to do something now about these people being tossed off their properties. I'm fine. Just a mile or so east of the freeway interchange, 
is the San Fernando Mission built in 1797, not to LA County codes, and it too suffered no damage. So my argument would be that they ought to send all the plans, Kim Fahey, for approval. <laughs> by the name of Simon Rodia, began building his unique creation. It turned out to be something called the Watts Towers. They were about to be torn down in 1957 because the city of Los Angeles said they weren't built rationally. They weren't built according to plan. Fortunately, fortunately, cooler heads prevailed. Now, well, the Watts Towers are an amazing tourist attraction. If I could invite Kim Fahey to move his property the Little Rock, I would do it. But I would ask you to give him some consideration and maybe ask what, or do what he asked you to do, and that is to give some consideration, maybe write a letter to the county, maybe Mike Antonovich, and say, maybe it would be a good idea to consider making that place an historic, just like the Watts Towers. There's some historic documentation that you can see. So thank you very much. It's not going to fall down, and Kim, Pei, Kim Fahey's house is not going to fall down either. In fact, in the next earthquake that takes out every LA County building there is, Kim Fahey's house will still be standing. I'll be standing underneath his house. It's yeah. rock solid. We're all going to come to him for shelter when everything else falls down. Um, I'm not an engineer, but I've either built or remodeled every house I've ever lived in as a child and as an adult. And anyone who goes to Kim Fahey's house will realize that this house is going to stand forever. And not only that, it's absolutely aesthetically beautiful. He's a creative architect. He's expressing <laughs> And to me, there's, actually, there's, no, there's no legal reason, there's no structural reason, there's no safety reason why anything should happen to that beautiful place. It should be preserved, certainly for his family to enjoy, and after they're gone, for other families to enjoy or for the community to enjoy. Yeah, that's how I feel. Thank you. Was there ever a complaint by a neighbor or somebody who spotted that? It was a mysterious complaint. Yeah, it's that guy named A. Anonymous. Yeah. He gets around <laughs> oh. all over the Animal Valley. So yeah. was I'd I like to actually talk about that. If I may. you got me going. My name is Kevin Barker. I was a longtime acting resident, right up the street. So you're not my name? No, I live in Avalon. And I'll tell you why. You the county started you. messing with me right here in Little Rock. I'm a truck driver. I'm the vice president of the Antelope Valley Truckers Organization. They came, we were building our house right here on Nichols, and we had a 50 by 150 lot that we owned, my wife and I. And we had a 10 by 10 shed right in the middle next to our driveway while we built our house. They came and said, it has to be 20 feet off of any property line. Do the math. How can you do that? There's no way. No way possible. And they just, from there, then they started getting us for having too many cars on our driveway. My truck parked in the road. All my neighbors, I loved all my neighbors. I would load hay for them. My tractor worked for them. Yeah, I never had a complaint. Then we moved to Little Rock. Got along great over there for about three years, you know. And then we went from a 50 by 150 lot to a full acre. I thought, now I could park my truck in the back, I could put my sheds, whatever. No. no. The county started coming, well, now you can't park your truck on your property. So we fought that for a little while. Then they started saying, you can't have cars in your backyard. I had classic El Caminos and Volkswagens. Can't own them. That's what they told me, you can't own them. Tell me where the law says I can't own something. Then they started messing with it, all my neighbors. The problem was, there was nine truck drivers on my street alone, but they only singled out two. Tell me why. They said, oh, well, we had a complaint. There is absolutely no way I had a complaint. I owned one side of the street. My parents owned the other side. I had no neighbors. So tell me what neighbor complained. So we formed a group, the Antelope Valley Truckers Organization. That was just to fight the county to park our, prop, our own trucks on our own property. We didn't bother nobody. 
Well, it, it's grown so far from that because people started coming out of the woodwork saying, well, the county came and got me for having a barbecue on my patio. Or they got me for having a shed that's more than 120 square feet. Okay, so you don't have a 10 by 10, you got a 10 by 12. So what? You're on an acre of land, what difference does it make? You need a permit. Oh, your fence is six foot one inch. Oh, you need a permit. I mean, it, it just got so petty, it wasn't even funny. So that's where that anonymous comes around. They would come by. I've actually thrown them off my property more than once. And they would say, we had an anonymous uh, complaint. Well, you get to court, Kim will tell you this, we don't know who anonymous is. He doesn't exist. We went to a property in Leona Valley. Well, how old was Betty McGee? She was 89 years old, something like that, in a wheelchair. She was literally on her deathbed, very nice woman. She got cited for having a Quonset hut with no ends on it that was built in 1940. Wasn't built to LA County code. They wanted her to tear it down. How do you do that in your wheelchair? So we're standing there when the county shows up and the guy says, well, what is this, a family reunion? And he was kind of a smart ass. So we said, yeah. And he, he's giving her a hard time. And then he looks across the street and he goes, well, do you want me to start citing your neighbors too? Because I see they have the same problem you do. So they're creating their own work. And if any of you in here think for one minute you don't have a violation on your property, including all of you, who probably have very nice homes. I lived in Acton too. You absolutely do not have a property without violations. I guarantee you. I would bet you $100 per violation that I could find them on your property. Because they have a list of 13 things that you are approved to do on your property. And if you've got a barbecue, it ain't on the list. So these county some bitches, and excuse my language, they need to be stopped. While we were in court, you probably didn't know that. Did you notice Dave, Dave Campbell with bodyguards? Why do you think he had them? He's been, he's been telling everybody that I'm threatening him, that I'm intimidating him. I've never said two words to the man, never once. All I do is stand there. I have been to a hundred of these property inspections by the county where they show up with their goon squad with guns drawn, saying that, you know, you can't own this, you can't do this. And they say they come without guns, I've seen it. They say we come to clear the property because you might have snipers in that motorhome in your backyard. And I mean, it's ridiculous. They cited my friend for a motorhome that hadn't been there for a year. Let me ask you a question. You say you've seen guns. What were the guns? Were they handguns? Standard issue sidearms. Sidearms. Yeah. They were, they were knives and blocks and it, stuff it like that. It happened to a very, very close friend to mine. All right. I understand. Uh, you've seen the county come on property. Yes, I have. Yeah. As with yes. Bill, yep. my wife, Kim, Tom, Carl. They had automatic. We have seen that, but they weren't drawn. They were, you know, they did have. They'll tell you that they don't use firearms. I've talked to Deputy Short. You know who I am. <laughs> We've had long, had long trucker conversations. <laughs> That's why he's so quiet. He knows. No, he's a great guy. He's been a long time. This needs to be a discussion. Uh, you know, uh, can you respond to that? I do not know what the NAT team does. I don't follow the NAT. Well, they're an independent from us. In, in my area, Los Angeles Forest Highway, it's particularly bad. We've had marijuana houses near us. We have people who have numerous trailers on their property. Stolen property, uh, people using drugs. We depend on the NAT team to, with the multi-agency approach that they have to enforcement, health and safety, uh, drugs, um, re, uh, zoning enforcement, to protect the good tax-paying neighbors, against the marijuana houses, against people who have stolen property, against the meth heads, okay? That's my experience with the NAT team, and I'm not gonna back down from it. They have only done good in, in the area of Long Angeles Forest Highway. I'm so sorry you've had a bad experience. May I that for a second? Okay. <laughs> you finished? Yep. Uh, you have another comment? Well, I'd just like to respond to what she said. I agree with you. That's why the NAT team was designed well, that's to go out for gangs and, and, you know, people that are actually hurting people. There's no reason for the NAT team to show up at an 89-year-old woman in a wheelchair's house because of a damn quantity. I mean, you can't refute that. I don't know. I don't know. But I did, I, I'll, I'd like to do a test. If you let me, I'd like to come to your house and point out all of your problems on your property.
that you don't even know are there. <laughs> no, my point being that it could happen to anyone. We have. This is this is not easy for me because I I come out of an era. I was in the Hague during the summer of love, so I understand doing stuff, and I know understand understand what it's like to go over the men to see them. City is one of the structures that people have built. I've also repaired earthquake damage, and I know the capriciousness of an earthquake. I've repaired a 450 pound shape that was cracked almost three quarters of the way through. And that's the kind of force of earthquakes. And so I, I guess I'm kind of a defender of code in some ways, because you see what happens in countries where you don't have code. Absolutely. Yeah. But what there, if, if there's, a, there's a question here that's come up, but those are not Mr. Lady's issue. It goes into a whole other issue, but we don't need to have it on the agenda. That's what Kim was actually trying to do. Yeah, it's it's well and beyond so I think that, that the, the press has been trying to deal with it. A lot of people have been trying to deal with it. I try and deal with it uh, as best I can. I'm, I'm the health department and I are not getting along right now, because as far as I'm concerned, they don't do their job. But one thing about anonymous, this is a source of incredible frustration to me, because the reason for anonymous is that there are criminals out there who are important, and they don't want someone's name out there in case someone gets out of the Sure, it's hot. Well, I have done two reports myself from people in that and say there's a problem and there's a problem here. We'll report it here. And here's how you report it. Well, I don't want to because I'm afraid for my family. Okay, I'll report it. So I report it. But I would encourage anyone to, if you have a problem, if you have a problem, go after it. But, but this is something that, that we need to deal with. If you want support from a counselor, you, then you're gonna, we're going to have to deal with it jointly. So I think we've, we've spent close to an hour on this issue. So if you don't mind, sir, with all due respect. I'll I wasn't done, but I'll, I'll, that's <laughs> fine. <laughs> Go ahead. I like, I like to make one number. I know what I'm down with. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's a great Thank you. 